Hello there, welcome to European Election Night on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson with you for the next four hours as results come through from this huge democratic exercise. More than 400 million people in 28 countries have been eligible to take part in this election across the last four days. 751 members of the European Parliament are being elected and big changes in the makeup of that parliament are already underway. France's President Macron had billed the election as a clash between what he called progressives and populists. That looks to be playing out already. Well, if the polls are to be believed, this could be the night where we see a wave of new MEPs from nationalist, far-right, Eurosceptic and populist parties entering the Parliament. Here on France 24, we are aiming to give you as comprehensive a picture as we can. We'll be bringing you live results updates as we get them for each country. Uh, France 24 correspondents will be giving us live reaction and analysis from European capitals. We're live in Brussels, London, Rome, Berlin, Madrid and Budapest, you saw them just there. Here in Paris, our reporters are at the election night headquarters of the parties that have come out on top, Emmanuel Macron's La République en Marche, Marine Le Pen's Rassemblement National, and the Green Party. Here in the studio with me as well for the first hour of this programme, we have Olga Giverny, a member of the uh, French Parliament for the President's Party. Hello to you. Hello. And uh, joining us as well, Vice President of the French Senate, Hélène Conway-Mouret, a member of the Socialist Party and former Minister for French People Abroad. Hello there. Hello. Well, let's uh, get going with a recap of the big results that we have so far from France. The exit poll that came out at 8 p.m. Paris time is on your screen right now. You can see there RN, that is Rassemblement National, National Rally, the party of Marine Le Pen, far right party, 23.2%, more than one percentage point ahead of the president's La République En Marche and their allies on 21.9%. And the surprise of the evening, the Greens and Ecology List on almost 13% there, pushing the centre-right Les Républicains into fourth place. The far left, La France Insoumise, France Unbowed, 6.7, neck and neck with the traditional Parti Socialiste. Well, the turnout is also a story uh, here in France and all across Europe. Uh, in France, turnout is looking to be above 50% for the first time in a European election since 1994. And uh, that higher turnout looking to be replicated all around the EU as well. Well, we're going to take you straight to Brussels to speak to our correspondent, Dave Keating. Uh, Dave, uh, we've had a little overview there of the big result from here in France, of course, which we'll delve into more with our studio guests in a moment. Uh, but can you just give us a bit of a roundup of uh, the other big news of the night from around the EU? Yeah, I think one of the big stories that we're already seeing being painted here tonight is the so-called green wave. The Greens also did really well in Germany and other European countries. In the Netherlands, they were expected to do well. They didn't do quite as well as they had hoped. Uh, but that is a big story. And actually behind me, the leaders of the Green Group are addressing journalists right now. Uh, and they sound pretty happy with uh, tonight's results, uh, according to kind of an initial projection estimates is very very preliminary but they're putting the greens at fourth place uh, they would theoretically have around the same number of seats as the uh, populist block that uh, Marine Le Pen is trying to form with Matteo Salvini uh, if that block ever does get formed uh, but certainly this is a good night for the greens not a great night for establishment parties but I would say not as bad as maybe some of them had feared all right, we will be going into those uh, individual countries in a bit more detail with our other correspondents. But just staying with you for the moment, Dave, uh, I was mentioning turnout uh, very much up here in France and uh, replicated elsewhere around Europe by the look of it. Yeah, that's the other big story of the night. Turnout in these European elections have gone down every single election since they started in 1979. So this would be the first year that actually sees the turnout go up. And I think that's a reflection of the really the, the place that European politics has risen to in terms of media coverage in Europe and also kind of some of the big issues that are on people's minds. That pattern in France is being repeated uh, everywhere, I would say, with the very notable exception of Italy 
globally, where it looks like turnout is actually significantly down from 2014. That may be because of the weather. I'm told it was a pretty bad uh, weather there in Italy today. But really, the Italian turnout is the bucking the trend for the day, which has seen turnout significantly up in almost all EU countries. All right, thanks so much. Uh, Dave Keating joining us live there from uh, the, the Press Nerve Centre at the European Parliament in Brussels. Uh, we'll be speaking to you throughout the night, of course. Uh, let's uh, bring things back here to France for the moment, though. I mentioned we've got uh, Olga Giverny with us, who's a member of the, the French Parliament for the President's Party, La République En Marche. Uh, Olga Giverny, second place for the party of government. That's a defeat. Well, it's not a defeat. First of, first of all, I would like to congr congratulate all the candidates uh, who are, have been campaigning quite a lot for the, for, for the last few weeks and also be happy with the turnout we have. It means that we managed to um, have a speech that French uh, could, could hear and want to uh, be part of, uh, which was not the case and hasn't been the case for the 30 last years uh, because we've all over 50% of uh, turnout today. So, um, yeah, we, know, we knew that it was, um, it, it was tricky for us uh, against the populism. Um, we, uh, we, we talk about the clash between populism and um, progresses, the progresses that we have. And, and also we know that it, it's not going to be easy uh, in the parliament. And, um, but we, we're going to manage to have a, a group of nearly 100 um, deputies uh, where we, could be, we, we will be the uh, biggest part of it because we will have uh, over 20 deputies in, uh, in the parliament. So uh, the, the point is how after this we, we can manage to have all the uh, measures that we mm. want to uh, put in place in Europe uh, with all the ally we, we have uh, with uh, other um, member. Uh, at the same time, uh, President Macron, uh, as we know, uh, cast this whole election as a clash between progressives and populists. He very much went head on uh, with the populists, the far right, the nationalists, the Eurosceptics. Um, Marine Le Pen today uh, said that the French president and his policies have been rejected. Um, Surely there are going to be reverberations here in France, uh, perhaps a, a reshuffle in the government, uh, perhaps uh, the government should be thinking about taking a change of tack with their policies. Oh, well, if, if we look at the uh, election in 2014, um, when we had a party um, uh, with the president, they had 14% 40, in the European and nothing happened and no one really claimed any, anything. So I don't see why when we are around 22 which is pretty much the, the same as the first round in an election of uh, President Macron, we, we, we should consider that we have to change everything. I, I, we do have to always uh, think of uh, what, what we can do better, obviously, but uh, definitely saying today that uh, we, we need to, to, to change the government, it's, it's a bit over, uh, over the... You think that's a bit over the top? Yeah. Well, let's bring in uh, Vice President of the Senate, Hélène conry Um Now, as I said, you're a member of the, the Socialist Party, which does look to have made it above the 5% mark needed to gain seats in the European Parliament. But again, a, a party that was the party of the President, François Hollande, until just a couple of years ago, seems to be being rejected by the French people? Yes, but <clears throat> it wasn't a national election, even though, indeed, the president played very much this, this is me, or chaos, this is me, or Marine Le Pen, and therefore was hoping that there would be this Republican uh, move that uh, there was at the last election. And indeed, every time the uh, Front National um, comes to the second round, mm. um, but I hate to agree with Marine Le Pen that indeed um, it was uh, an election that was played on, the na on national issues. And I think somehow I'm, I, I feel quite angry that um, we were you know, stolen of the real debate that should have happened, which should have been on European issues, a European project. Stolen by whom? By this... Uh, debate between Marine Le Pen and President Macron as if it was the first, the third round of mm. the election that took place two years ago. And um, I think, you know, we indeed have to be very happy that more people, you know, went and voted. This is, you know, mm. a good thing. But I'm not sure that it's just a rise in the consciousness over 
uh, European issues. Maybe the environment played, um, I think, a role and that will explain indeed the rise in the score of uh, Yannick Jadot, and this is a good thing. And I think President mm -hmm. Macron, two days before the polls, actually conveyed, you know, a council to talk about the environment and so on. So, but um, I, I feel I feel very disappointed. I think, you know, we should it should have been the time, if indeed we're talking about Europe, mm. that we we would have had a real debate, and we haven't had it. All right, well, uh, I'd like to uh, bring in our reporters who are out and about around Paris uh, at the election night headquarters of the three parties that have come out on top. Uh, our reporters on screen, uh, we have Haxi myers belkin at uh, Emmanuel Macron's headquarters for La République en Marche, Catherine Norris-Trent in the middle there uh, with Marine Le Pen's Rassemblement National and Luke Schrago, who is at the Green Party headquarters. Uh, Luke Schrago, just coming to you first, uh, the Greens have been very much the surprise of the night. Uh, what's the atmosphere down there? Word. And the atmosphere down here is, uh, I might describe it as almost electric, uh, a massive sense of... I'm sorry, uh, Luke, I know I just came to you there happiness. one second ago, but unfortunately that, really we're just hearing that Nathalie Loiseau is speaking. She's the lead candidate for the president's uh, La République en Marche. Uh, we're going to uh, listen in to Nathalie Loiseau, former By Europe minister as well. The millions of voters Confiance. who place their trust in us. I assure them of our commitment to live up to them. With this uh, result, two years after the presidential election, after six months of a serious social crisis and after a campaign where everyone had made it their target, the presidential majority has demonstrated its strength. With the input of its partners, the Republic on the Move, a new movement built around the European vision of the French president, confirms its lasting presence in French political life. Our list will send over 20 MEPs to Strasbourg and we will be the most numerous national delegation in the new central group that is being formed. The support of the president will be in a situation to weigh heavily in this group that will be key and to implement its ambitious plan, which is also ours. With Renaissance, thanks to your votes, the voice of France will once again be heard in the European Parliament. And yet we did not come out in front and we regret it. For us, the fight is not over. We will conduct it in the European Parliament from preventing nationalists from weakening France and blocking progress the French people expect. I call on all European parties to unite to defend the interests of Europeans and not to leave our common house uh, open to the knocks of those who wish to break it. To the French people who believe in the destiny in France and Europe, I say this evening that they can count on our determination. Vive la République, vive la France, et vive l'Europe!
You were listening just then to Nathalie Loiseau. She's the uh, the former Europe Minister of France, uh, who has been leading President Macron's uh, Renaissance list uh, for his La République en Marche party. Uh, as we said, uh, that uh, list coming in in second place here in France, based on the uh, the estimations that we have so far, just behind uh, Marine Le Pen's Rassemblement National, the far right list, by uh, just over one percentage point. Uh, France 24's Haxi Myers-Belkin uh, was listening in at the uh, La République en Marche headquarters. Uh, Haxi, Nathalie Loiseau seeming moderately upbeat, uh, saying that uh, her fellow MEPs who've just been elected will be able to uh, enact some change. Absolutely, you just heard people uh, applauding her uh, behind me. A very upbeat atmosphere here tonight, considering that La République en Marche uh, did come second in these European elections. Without a doubt, a significant blow uh, to uh, Emmanuel Macron. This is not uh, what the party wanted. I've been speaking to a lot of people tonight uh, who told me that they were disappointed, although not necessarily surprised at these uh, results. I spoke to one man who told me uh, that he was extremely sad about the image of the party that these results uh, now project. We know that Macron is staunchly pro-European. He's uh, aggressive, uh, a liberal. The person I spoke to said that he's very worried that tonight's results will be seen as a rejection of Macron's uh, pro-European plan. He also said uh, that it was a real shame that this election had, uh, for many, come to be something of a referendum on Macron's presidency and not simply uh, elections for representatives at an EU level. But as you heard just then, a lot of cause for optimism uh, for some people here at the Republic on the Move headquarters. Uh, I spoke to uh, a number of people tonight who said that the difference uh, in percentage points between Le Pen's uh, national rally and Macron's uh, Republic on the Move was just 1.3 percent. They said this really wasn't significant uh, enough to be getting too sad about, certainly uh, not significant enough for Macron uh, to be worrying about his authority being dead and absolutely uh, not uh, severe enough uh, for anyone to be talking seriously about Macron resigning, which of course is what Le Pen had suggested uh, Macron do if uh, his party lost to hers tonight. All right, thanks so much, Haxi myers belkin Let's return to Luke Schrego, who I so rudely cut off then when uh, Nathalie Loiseau started speaking. Uh, Luke Schrego reporting for us from the surprise success of the evening here in France, uh, the Green Party. Uh, in fact, uh, we've just had some new figures through showing that the Green Party are in fact doing better than expected, uh, now looking to be on 13.1%. Uh, uh, can we bring in Luke Schrago uh, at the Green Party headquarters? Uh, Luke, uh, what's the atmosphere there with this surprise uh, for the Greens? Well, definitely a surprise for the Greens. I mean, we'd seen in the run-up to the vote, uh, Yannick Jadot had been saying he wanted to get around about 15% of the vote. That's what he was saying in the run-up to the election uh, today. Uh, now, of course, that was uh, while he was polling around about, uh, the, the Greens rather, polling around about 7 to 10%. So very much a surprise that uh, he's managed to do as well as 12.8, uh, so those initial results there. It's certainly looking like a breakthrough. And uh, what he referred to as a green wave during uh, his speech not uh, too long ago here in uh, northern Paris. Now, what he said that it was a clear sign that uh, the environment should be at the heart of people's lives. Uh, what he said it would allow society to grow and prosper, and in particular, the young. Now, make no mistake, that it is in fact the young that uh, are very much behind uh, this move across uh, much of Europe that we've seen, uh, including, of course, here in France. We've seen uh, months and months of uh, climate strikes, protests, uh, very much uh, the, the environment back in the forefront of people's minds. And with all of these young people now coming of voting age, this is one of their main concerns. This is the preoccupation that they have, and this is what matters to them. And as so more of them mature, I think what we're going to see very much is a, a much more of a move uh, to put uh, the environment back at the heart of European politics. And that, in fact, is what uh, uh, Jado said this evening. He was uh, going to be creating uh, uh, citizens' committees to keep an eye on uh, MEPs, to look at what they were doing, to look at European projects, to look at uh, the way that uh, policies were carried out and put into practice. So I think what we can see moving forward is uh, very much uh, an emboldened uh, Green Party at the heart of Europe uh, really mm. making itself known.
All right, thanks so much, Luke Schrago. Uh, coming back to you uh, later on as we get those results firming up, of course. I'd just like to bring in once again uh, my guests here in the studio, Hélène conway mouret uh, Vice President of the French Senate. Um, it seems like French people, from what we were hearing there, certainly do want more green policies. We've had huge climate rallies and marches here in France. Uh, it seems that other parties don't seem to have been able to capitalise on that. Yes, and I think it is a very good thing. And um, even the suggestion of having committees, because, uh, you know, everybody who is elected is accountable on what to do. And it's true that at the level, the European level, uh, the people don't mm. really know their European MPs. And I think it's a very good thing. But what I would like to say is that there's also one factor that we shouldn't forget. The left is scattered was unable to unite. And I know that a lot of people have actually voted for the Green Party mm. as um, a result of being at a loss as to who to vote for, having been disappointed maybe, you know, with the Socialist Party, uh, not recognizing themselves in the France Insoumise because it is not what they want. Um, mm -hmm. it, we have to remember that the majority of French people are pro-European. I mean, every um, poll will show that between 60 and 70 percent of the French population is very much pro-European. So voting for Marine Le Pen is not that suddenly they become eurosceptic. They voted for Marine Le Pen for other reasons. Um, and I think, you know, it's one lesson that we need to draw from uh, the, the scores that we have tonight. Yes, but perhaps some soul searching for uh, the, the Socialist Party of which you are a member, which uh, does seem to be uh, neck and neck in fourth place on just about 6.6%. Uh, we'll get more uh, latest results updates with uh, Luke Brown, who's joined us in the studio uh, in just a moment. First, though, uh, I'd like to take us back to Brussels. Uh, we have there uh, a guest, uh, the vice president of the European People's Party, the EPP group, uh, David McAllister. He's a German MEP from Angela Merkel's CDU party. Uh, Mr McAllister, thanks for being with us. Now, uh, we've been talking a lot about France, but we've had big results in from Germany as well. Uh, your party, the CDU, uh, losing some of its vote share. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, the far right Alternative for Deutschland are doing much, much better. Also, the Greens, uh, your party perhaps losing the argument. Well, our main aim in Germany was once again to become the strongest political force. We managed to do this, but of course this result uh, can't be uh, satisfactory. We were hoping for more, we were fighting for more, we were expecting more. Uh, but the Greens are the big winners of these German elections and we will have to analyse very carefully why we lost votes. We have to take this seriously. Uh, the Social Democrats lost even more than we did, but nonetheless, we will have to sit down and really analyse this result very thoroughly. Absolutely. Well, particularly looking at those populist gains, uh, the uh, Alternative für Deutschland looking like they're going to be on uh, 10 members of the European Parliament, which is certainly sizeable. Um, is this a watershed moment for the traditional mainstream parties, such as your own, a moment to really change tack? Perhaps voters really don't feel like they're being listened to by parties such as yours? Voter turnout was 10% higher than last time in Germany. That is a good result. That's good news. This strengthens European democracy. This strengthens the European Parliament. This also strengthens the Spitzenkandidat and procedure. And I'm, I fear that without this higher turnout, the percentage for AFD voters would have been even higher. We were campaigning the whole time, telling our German fellow citizens, please go to the European elections and show that we don't want to give the future of Europe to the demagogues, the nationalists and the populists. We are, as European People's Party now, obviously the strongest political force in the European Parliament. And we are ready to reach out to the other pro-European, democratic, constructive forces in this parliament because we need to form a stable majority in the next European parliament. Mm. Enormous challenges are ahead of us. And what we need now is a European parliament which is strong and active against the radicals and the demagogues from the far right and the far left. But uh, in, in terms of policies, I mean, how concretely do you intend to, to reach out to voters and to, to try and convince them that uh, your, your party and your group is the one to support, is the one that can, can shape the way forward? Those people stay in this uh, political group. I 
Yeah. Well, these European elections are, are, in the end, a mix of 28 national elections. And the German result, for me, it's quite obvious that climate change was the main issue. And obviously, our party is not delivering the results, the answers, which mm. a number of people are expecting. We were campaigning on the issues of the economy, security, stability, border protection, other important issues. And we will have to analyze why weren't we able to transport our issues better. And on the other hand, we will have to analyze very carefully what do voters actually expect from us on climate change. I mean, climate change can't be tackled at a national level. This is a European or even an international challenge. Mm. But certainly we will have to sit down very carefully. What the first analysis in Germany is showing is that we lost a lot of votes among young voters. And mm. this is something we have to take very seriously. And just looking at the uh, European Parliament as a whole, as I said, you're vice president of the European People's Party, uh, which has been the, the dominant group in the European Parliament for the last five years, dominating the European Commission as well. Uh, now, uh, looking at the predictions that we have, uh, the EPP could lose around 50 MEPs overall, have a, a much narrower margin between your group and the others. Uh, can, you, can you expect the EPP to continue to dominate European politics? Well, as I just pointed out, the result neither in Germany or in, at the European level is satisfactory. We will lose a few dozen colleagues, a few dozen seats. Uh, this is disappointing. I deeply regret this. But still, we will probably be the strongest political force in the European Parliament. So this means that the EPP will have to show leadership, and we are ready to show this leadership. We want to reach out to the other democratic constructive pro-European forces, the Socialists, the Liberals, the Greens. And we have to find a way how we can find a stable majority which is able to take decisions in the next years. That's important now. And obviously the polls show that it won't be possible to form a majority against the EPP without including mm. radicals, populists and demagogues. So. We want to talk about content. We want to form a plan for the next five years, how to move forward in the European Union. And we are ready to do this with our colleagues, with other democratic parties, despite mm. our different political views. But in a democracy in the end, and especially in a multinational democracy, you have to be able to show a compromise and a consensus. And just uh, one final question, uh, the, uh, the populist uh, groups that have been coming together uh, very likely to, f to form quite a large faction in the European Parliament. They've been promising variously an earthquake uh, to completely uh, shake up European politics, even so, uh, in terms of Nigel Farage of the UK's Brexit Party, to, to try and disrupt the European Parliament as much as possible. That seems like it is a real possibility or, or likelihood at this point, doesn't it? Well, the centre of European politics has been challenged, is, will be challenged by the far right and the far left. And we have to stand together. These populists, these demagogues are against European cooperation. They want to destroy the European Union. And we have to stand up and fight against these political forces, mm -hmm. against the radicals, because we strongly believe that the future, our future lies in more and better European cooperation. So. The, the centre of the parliament, the political forces of the centre have lost at this election. They have lost seats. And now it's even more important that we work closely together and that we don't become dependent on nationalists and demagogues from the far right and the far left. David McAllister, uh, Vice President of the European People's Party, thank you so much for joining us there from the European Parliament in Brussels. Well, as we were speaking about those uh, European groups, I know it's not something that uh, all of our viewers follow extremely closely. So we have Luke Brown from our Europe desk uh, to fill us in on some of the details. Uh, as, as I said there to David McAllister, it looks like the, the European Parliament is becoming more splintered. The, the differences between the sizes of those groups is becoming much smaller, isn't it? You're quite right. The moderate parties, the EPP, the, uh, the, so the S&D parties, uh, they're still uh, the biggest groups in the uh, European Parliament, but they are 
are losing ground. They are, uh, if we look at, the, if we can compare the current projections uh, with the p past results of 2014, we can see that, yes, the EPP is currently ahead with 173 MEPs, but that's 44 fewer uh, than last time around. The S&D, uh, they're currently on track for 147, uh, that is 39 fewer. Uh, so who's picking up the slack? On, one, on the one hand, it's the uh, the uh, A, uh, L, uh, the uh, the ALD, the Liberal Democrats, who are, have on track to boost their numbers by about 34. That would That's the group that Emmanuel Macron's uh, La République En Marche is joining. That's essentially why they are doing so much better. That is a, a, a pretty uh, neat uh, 20 or so extra uh, MEPs in one fell swoop with that announcement that was, uh, that was made today. Uh, and uh, the other end of the spectrum uh, from the very centrists of the uh, Liber Liberal Democrats, we are seeing uh, a a number of breakthroughs for those far right parties, the EFDD and the ENF. They're going to those two far right uh, movements, uh, uh, anti European movements. At the moment, they're not forming a coalition, but they are very mm. uh, much uh, a similar anti European message with, of course, uh, their own uh, uh, f factions. So I think that is going mm. to be key uh, moving forward, their, their weight. All right, thanks so much, uh, Luke Brown. So uh, if we can just bring that graphic back onto screen for a moment, we'll have another look at that. So uh, just to get our viewers used to this, you're going to be seeing it quite a lot over the next uh, three and a half hours or so. You can see essentially there we've got really from the left of the political spectrum to right. So uh, the, the far left, the Socialists and Democrats is S&D there. The Greens significantly larger, as you can see. ALDE in the middle, the Liberals and Democrats, the centrist group, and then moving on to the centre-right and far-right. That's how we're going to be reading that graphic as we go through the evening. Thank you so much, Luke Brown, uh, for preparing that. We will definitely be coming back to you uh, to make more sense of all of these results as they're coming in. Well, uh, let's return to uh, our reporter who's at uh, the big winning party headquarters uh, of the night here in France, at least. Uh, Catherine Norris Trent is at Rassemblement National's election night headquarters, also known as National Rally. Uh, Catherine, uh, we, uh, we've already had two quite triumphant speeches, haven't we, from Jordan Bardella, the, the, the lead candidate on the list, and Marine Le Pen herself, the party leader. <laughs> Absolutely, the mood is very triumphant down here at the National Rally headquarters. In fact, as you can probably hear from the music in the room, the party has well and truly started here. Um, there's disco music going on, not many people dancing, but champagne is flowing and they are painting this as a big victory. And not only that, as a big comeback, having been written off, uh, they felt after the 2017 presidential elections when Marine Le Pen lost out to Emmanuel Macron. Now they say this puts them back on the map, so feeling confident and coming out with some big calls for a shake-up, not on a European level, but in France, Marine Le Pen has been doing the rounds, saying that faced with these results, faced with the fact that Emmanuel Macron's party has not come in first place, well, the whole of French politics really needs a shake-up. So she's calling for the parliament here in France, the Assemblée Nationale, to be dissolved and for new elections to be held on a more proportional basis. So not really any details of what kind of electoral system she wants to see and when she wants that to happen, but she's saying politics in France can't continue as normal. So clearly using this as a springboard for national politics. On the European level, she is going to be meeting, we believe, with Matteo Salvini, the Italian interior minister, in the coming days. Not clear when or where, but they're going to be looking to shore up that alliance. Catherine Orishant, thank you so much uh, there at uh, what is indeed turning into a party there at Marine Le Pen's uh, party uh, election night headquarters. Uh, let's come back to Olga Giverny, a member of parliament, as I said, for uh, La République En Marche here in France. Uh, so just hearing what has come out of the uh, Rassemblement National Party, that call for the National Assembly to be dissolved, uh, these great changes. But we've also been hearing from uh, other uh, political factions that there should be more of a, a coming together in politics. Is that really possible? Because, uh, of course, here in France, there were 34 party lists. Uh, are these parties, are your parties going to be able to work together across party divides? 
Well, obviously at the Assembly Nas National, and there's uh, no change at all because all the deputy, uh, the member of Parliament are, are, are staying, and we will still be working on our um, measures for 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 the French and after what the president announces. Um, I, I I don't think, as I mentioned, it's uh, uh, over the top saying that we have to dissolve everything, and uh, I just would like to remind our, our that our party did, didn't exist two years ago, and and now we managed to send 20, uh, at least 20 um, um, uh, deputy and the, and the member of, um, uh, in the uh, European Parliament. So um, it's, yeah, I, I don't understand why they keep going on their things. They are very little in the French Parliament. Uh, I know they would like to uh, change everything and recreate a, a, a referendum. It's it's not what's going to be happening, definitely. So um, I... I I think they they should be just not triumphant in uh, in uh, the, the thing they do. They they already had deputy and they managed to maintain uh, some some of them. So um, let's now work on what we think it's it's the best. We definitely ha have to uh, have an ally in the, in the uh, European Parliament, mm. and we definitely need to work together with the progressists in France uh, to uh, to have a, a settlement. Now, this result, of course, comes at the end of more than six months of uh, weekly protests by uh, what's the, known as the Gilets Jaunes movement, the Yellow Vests. Uh, Emmanuel Macron himself very personally targeted. How big an impact do you think the Gilets Jaunes have had on this election here? I, I think it was a pretty hard time for us because I, 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 I say we've been campaigning for months and months on the European um, project and working, working on it, and obviously we, all the subject we didn't really talk about uh, European subject except that we they, um, the, the, the Rassemblement National managed to say this is a vote against um, Emmanuel Macron uh, which is a kind of a trick uh, to, to their electors and saying that we don't really know what they're going to do in the, par in the European Parliament so the context was not this good for us and obviously we did know it was at risk for us all right, thanks so much, uh, Olga Giverny, uh, Member of Parliament for uh, President Macron's party. Well, uh, we've been switching between France and Germany for the last half an hour or so. Uh, we will be heading back uh, to uh, not Germany itself, but to uh, a candidate who was standing uh, for uh, the Alternative für Deutschland party, the Alternative for Germany, or the far-right party, uh, which seems to have gained uh, 10 members of the European Parliament. Uh, one of those candidates on the line with us now, uh, Gunnar Beck, uh, who works uh, at a uh, university in London as well. Gunnar Beck, thanks for being with us. Uh, what, what do you make of these results, uh, ma major gains for your party? What was, what was behind that? Uh, well, I think uh, there is a growing awareness in Germany, although perhaps not in the same way as it's in some other countries, uh, that a lot is going wrong in the EU. So uh, I think uh, that is one major factor. Uh, the other, no doubt, is very considerable. Uh, dissatisfaction with the policies of the Grand Coalition in Germany. Both the ruling parties uh, have suffered uh, quite considerable losses. Well, when you say a lot going wrong in the EU, uh, we have seen uh, here in France and in other places that the pro-European parties have still had a perfectly respectable showing. Uh, what do you feel is uh, people voting against in, in terms of when you say things are going wrong in the EU? Well, I uh, only really have to point to two main examples. Uh, there's the perpetual euro crisis, which has been going on for nearly 10 years. And um, uh, there is, of course, a massive migration problem. Uh, presently, uh, 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 they're trying to keep a lid on it, but that's going to erupt uh, uh, again if we are not careful. So there are two major crises that are threatening the very root of the European economies. So if I talk about mm. problems in the EU, these are perhaps the two most important ones I have well, in mind. Just bringing uh, up the... Brexit too. Mm. 
Well, just bringing up the uh, the migration issue that you mentioned there, it is absolutely the case that there was uh, a huge influx of migrants into the European Union in 2015, but numbers are down uh, around about 90% since then in terms of arrivals of asylum seekers. Is it really true that there's a migration crisis or is this something that's been stoked up by parties to increase their own vote share? Well, there is a migration crisis in the sense that the consequences of what happened in 2015 and 16 uh, admittedly, largely as a result of the policies of the German Chancellor, that these consequences haven't been de dealt with at all. What so consequences the crisis, are you speaking of, just to be specific about it? Well, I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, let's just focus on the economic uh, uh, consequences. According to current estimates, um, the two million or so migrants that entered Germany in, uh, since 2015 are costing Germany around, well, at least 50 billion a year. Well, how are the countries going to cope uh, uh, with these kinds of costs, which are going to be long term, has to be seen. Uh, but if I may, may add just one further point, uh, a lid is kept on the crisis right now due to the policies of the Italian government. Um, that Italian government is expressly Eurosceptic. If mm. the Europhile and EU fanatical parties had won the last uh, elections in Italy uh, as well, uh, the crisis would be very much in the open. Well, we'll have to uh, see how things pan out in Italy, of course. I'd just like to um, uh, mention something that Nathalie Loiseau said. She was the lead candidate here in France for the president's uh, list. Uh, she said that uh, she and uh, the centrist allies of La République en Marche are going to work to stop nationalists from uh, blocking progress in the European Union. It does sound like uh, your party and, and your faction will have a bit of a fight on its hands. Well, I mean, uh, I think the term blocking is a bit indiscriminate. What is true is that uh, uh, um, we will undoubtedly oppose um, uh, uh, all legislative proposals that, uh, in our view, uh, are economically unsustainable or threaten the integrity of our European uh, societies. Now, we are not just blocking for the sake of blocking. Now, if I'm trying to, uh, uh, from the perspective of those parties that have, on the whole, lost quite a number of votes, well, naturally, I think there is a tendency for these parties uh, to try to see whether they can uh, 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 outmaneuver uh, those parties uh, that have been on the rise for quite a while. It is a kind of uh, anti-democratic consensus in favor of mm. established policies they're trying to establish. Uh -huh. I mean, I hope it's not uh, okay. going to take place. It would be a okay. kind of Germany writ large where uh, the centrist parties, if you could call, call them that, by which I really mean the Euro integrationist parties mm. uh, are trying to propel the integrationist uh, 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 process. Okay, got up. Uh, got up back. Unfortunately, we are going to have to. Skepticism. We're going to have to uh, uh, wrap things up, but thank you very much uh, for joining us there. Gunnar Beck, uh, candidate for the AFD uh, party in Germany. Uh, we will go to Berlin uh, to get a, a broader uh, vision. Uh, of what's going on uh, in uh, Germany with the German results. Uh, our correspondent there is Nick Spicer. Uh, Nick, uh, I hope you're with us. So uh, we're going to all sorts of different parts of Europe at the moment. Uh, just wanted to go through the results that we have with Angela Merkel's party uh, seeming to hold on to the top spot, but not really getting a resounding win. A resounding win wasn't really expected. The big news is the breakthrough of the Green Party, which has really doubled its score to become the second biggest political force in Germany. The consequences of that are, of course, the previous second placed party uh, in elections. The Social Democratic Party has dropped to third place. The problem is the Social Democrats are in a coalition government with Angela Merkel. So they're going to be doing a lot of soul searching, all the more so that there is here on the national level 
There was an election in Bremen, the smallest state which the Social Democrats have governed for 73 years. They lost that election. So there are questions about the actual continuing uh, continuation, if you will, of the federal coalition government with Angela Merkel and the Social Democratic Party and certainly the leader of the, uh, the leadership of the Social Democratic Party. The big news being Green Party doubling its score, the environment and the saving the planet really turning out to be the big theme of this European election campaign in Germany. Thanks so much, Nick Spicer, there in central Berlin. As we can see, we'll come back to you later on uh, as uh, the results come through. Uh, we will swish across now to Madrid and our correspondent, Sarah Morris. Uh, we haven't mentioned Spain, but we've, uh, we've had plenty of results from there. Uh, Sarah, uh, we saw the far-right Vox Party taking their first seats in the European Parliament this evening. Uh, we're certainly seeing some early uh, opinion polls uh, based on telephone um, polling uh, carried out today. Early results, uh, but it looks as if, yes, the far-right party, Vox, uh, could actually enter the parliament uh, for the first time uh, with as many as four seats. It also could be potentially, uh, if these uh, early polls are confirmed, a good night for the socialists. Uh, they could come out top of the European elections in Spain uh, uh, beating their rivals, the People's Party, and ahead of the Liberals. Uh, uh, we'll have to wait uh, to see if those polls are confirmed uh, uh, later this evening. Now, uh, the Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, has been under pressure recently. Uh, has his position uh, there in Spain been, been strengthened at all by this? That's really what he's been looking for, isn't it? Exactly. This for him is round two because a month ago the Spaniards went to the polls in their general election and uh, Pedro Sánchez is hoping uh, that he'll get a good result tonight. If uh, the result is good for him, that will shore up his hand as he goes to negotiate with his left-wing rivals, uh, Podemos and others. He's short in the national parliament of about 50 seats. And if he uh, can say to Podemos uh, that he's done exceptionally well, he may get his goal, which is to form a minority government and block uh, Podemos from for forming uh, or taking up cabinet positions. We'll have to wait uh, to see because the early uh, results in these opinion polls suggest uh, that Podemos could also have gained uh, seats, uh, meaning it might have uh, a strong hand as well uh, to enter uh, for a coalition government. All right, thanks so much, Sarah Morris, our correspondent there in Madrid. As you said, uh, we are only getting early results from Spain at this point, uh, so uh, we'll be seeing you again uh, later on as well. Uh, let's come back to uh, Luke Brown here in the studio uh, to uh, give us a bit of a recap <laughs> once again of uh, the, the picture across Europe. As we mentioned, 28 countries have been voting in this election, electing 751 MEPs. They're divided up into these groups. Luke Brown, uh, can you give us an overview of what's going on? Yeah, if we can just bring up uh, the figures uh, that we've been receiving uh, so far, we can see that uh, the EPP, the European uh, People's Party, is uh, doing the best with uh, in the region of 170 to 177 uh, seats. Uh, that is, though, however, considerably less than uh, in 2014, about 40 fewer uh, than the last time. That means the gap is actually narrowing between uh, the centre-right uh, and the centre-left, if you will, the um, the SND party, uh, they also lost seats. They lost about uh, 40 seats too, and that, that's putting them on uh, about 147. Uh, so as such, that means that those two parties that were the two biggest parties in the previous uh, parliament, uh, they remain uh, in that situation. The big surprise really uh, numerous big surprises has been the uh, breakthrough of the centrists, the, uh, the Liberal Democrats, the ALDE. Uh, they are on track for over 100 seats, having been on about uh, 68 in the last uh, parliament. That is largely due to the, uh, uh, the alliance that was struck just today with uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron's uh, La République en Marche here in France. That's adding an extra 20 uh, to their seats. That means that they are uh, on course to have uh, about 15 or so more than uh, even without uh, the uh, Emmanuel Macron's party. That means that they are doing uh, considerably better. Mm. The big story really is, however, the green wave. So the Greens uh, were on, uh, are on track for uh, over uh, or around about 70 seats uh, so far. That's 20 more than in the past uh, parliament. Uh, so the green wave that we've been talking about around Europe uh, is very much likely to uh, be uh, uh, 
uh, coming mm. to fruition due to perhaps those the protests that we've been seeing over the past weeks, but also uh, essentially uh, protest votes in countries such as here in France, where uh, the Greens have been really uh, siphoning off votes from the Socialist Party, uh, for example. Uh, the other major trend that, uh, that we'll have to be uh, keeping uh, tabs on is uh, the breakthrough or the continued uh, consolidation, really, of the far-right anti-European uh, populist parties of the EFDD and the ENF. Uh, they are uh, separate uh, factions. They have uh, slightly uh, 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 parallel paths but with different and, and um separate messages, you can see that they, those two extremely Eurosceptic uh, parties are well over uh, 100 uh, seats in total uh, in the uh, European uh, Parliament. And as you can see in, in this uh, figure here, uh, the original, uh, this is all down to do with the, uh, the, uh, the recreation of, 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 of the far-right part of the ENF, uh, mm. which is uh, being boosted by uh, the uh, Matteo Salvini's uh, Lega in Italy and his alliance that he's trying to form with other right wing populist parties. As you can see there, they had originally 57 e, uh, MEPs uh, in the ENF uh, group. They're on track to uh, acquire another 16 around Europe, uh, putting them on, a, a, on track for about 73 uh, MEPs. Uh, that would put them on uh, nearly 10% of the, uh, of the uh, European Parliament's number of MEPs. And really, this is the big trend. We're seeing the, the major parties, the, the centrist uh, left and the centre right, really shedding votes, and that's in favour, uh, in two different directions, in favour of the Greens and in favour of the far-right populists. The far-right populist uh, breakthrough was expected to be bigger, so I think one of the major takeaways we can take from this so far is that uh, does appear to have not been quite so much the case. of the group uh, coming up because all the alliance is going to be maybe some of the ecologists would like to be with uh, with us the Macron party because we have uh, some ecology measures in it but but and and it could be uh, appealing for, for for them so I just would like to say that there won't be any of this group called liberal democrat it will be different maybe it will be a pretty much the same number as you mentioned but definitely definitely it will be a different um, uh, po poly politics uh, going into this group. Hélène Conway-Mouret, I know that you wanted to come in on this as well. Politics changing for the future. Uh, as I said, your party, the, the Socialists, uh, really getting a much diminished score. Uh, surely the thinking in your party must be that things have to change. Yes, indeed. And what we see with um, Germany is that the parties in power uh, usually lose. Uh, I think people are getting tired of uh, and maybe disappointed very quickly and thus are looking for changes with the rise of uh, En Marche in, in France, but equally um, maybe other movements as well uh, throughout Europe. So that's the, the first point I would like to make. Now, the big disappointment, of course, is to if the Greens and the Socialists, who have always in the past um, been running elections together, had come together this time, mm. we would have a group on the left at 20 percent, which means that the left still exists, even though I understand, you know, some parties would like to see the right and the left disappear and to say there's only us and the extreme right. But I think it's a very dangerous game to play. And um, I think the, the issue of immigration, which is really at the center of the far, far right uh, fights. I mean, it was at the center of the Brexit, even though it wasn't really discussed because it's not politically correct. At least, you know, the AFD uh, in Germany take it as the central issue for them, even though it is not today. Um, as you rightly uh, reminded the, um, mm. the, 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 the the MT or the candidate there, that it, why, it is not anymore an issue. And well, yet, why do you think then it is so present in people's minds? Because uh, when we look at the, the Eurobarometer, the polling across all of Europe, immigration is still the number one concern across the Yeah, world. because, because it, is, it is a fear. I mean, people have not forgotten, you know, the pictures of uh, waves of migrants storming trains and trying to come through uh, Europe to arrive in France, Germany, Britain and, and, and so on. People still have that and also there is a recurrent um, reminder within the extreme right 
um, propaganda that we are on the threat of a massive uh, influx mm -hmm. of migrants coming from Africa and maybe climate change and indeed the demography on that continent will make it an issue and that is why we need as Europeans to come together and indeed solidarity hasn't been rightly uh, put in place mm. to help both Greece and Italy for a long time and we have the result now in Italy with the extreme right having risen simply because we were not capable of coming together you know to change the Dublin agreement and so on and I think you know we we, we do have not a crisis as he previously said Gunnar Beck, but the we do candidate. need to come together and indeed as Europeans to work plans to you know, control migrations, but they should be done on the external borders, not internal borders. So we have a lot of things to resolve. But I think the, 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 main, the main point to draw from this uh, night's mm -hmm. uh, result is that the pro-European parties are a majority and nationalities do not count. So I think Madame Loiseau has to be a little bit more humble and maybe she will learn that when she goes to the European mar Parliament. She's not going to make the difference. She's not going to be able to block well, herself. Quick anybody. reaction from... We, uh, we, we have... We have indeed, you know, blocks that will be able to compromise and decide on who well, is going to be of the time, president of just the commission. Let's so get on. a quick reaction on that from de, 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 uh, definitely know, from Nathalie Loiseau's party. Yeah, de, definitely. We know that as a central group, um, we, we will be also the, the third one. So it's not going to be make a big difference. Uh, except that the, we know the Parliament, European Parliament, work differently than in, in the, the, the French Parliament. And we do have to have a lie on each project, on each subject. And, and I think I think we could make the difference in having something uh, where we, we can have allies from both sides on the, on the uh, mm. right and, uh, and on the central right and on the central um, left as well. All right, I'd like to thank uh, thank you both very much. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to just take a short break at this point, but thanks for being with us. And Hélène conway moret Olga Givernet, Luke thank Brown's you. going to be staying with us as well. Hope to see you in just a couple of minutes' time after this short break.